Welcome back, everyone. Nick and Lex here. Thank you so much for joining me today to this new episode. Super excited. Today we got a marathon by Greybeard, and uh, we're going to feature some of Greybeard's favorite guitar players in this list. Now, I was thinking of maybe doing the intro, um, making the intro a little bit shorter and doing the uh the names i'm just gonna try this like once and then you let me you guys let me know if this is if the flow is better um because usually i talk about all the artists and the what are we gonna listen to before and then i just listen to it maybe if we just like do the name and the artist and the year and then listen to the song and then we do the artist and and so forth i don't know if that's going to give it a better flow maybe make it a little bit shorter because i did have heard that a lot of people are like these marathons are great but they're too long you know so let's just uh you know give a huge thank you to graybeard and everybody who's watching uh graybeard for sponsoring the video and you guys for watching it and giving it you know the likes and uh stuff and um but yeah let's do it this way let's just see how it flows and if i don't like it then I, I won't do it but just to make this a little bit shorter so first song we're gonna do and it's also in the description there's a whole list of the songs so pretty much you already know what you're in for so i don't know um so we're gonna start it off here with montrose the album with the same name space station number five and this is from 1973 so let's give it a listen and um, I'm going to be focused on the guitar playing because that's what Gravid mentioned that he liked the most. But I've heard some good stuff. I did get this album as, as well sent to us. Um, so again, thank you for that. So here we go with Space Station number five. Have fun, guys. Here we go. Some nice guitar trickery for that time. Oh! 
Wow, that's crazy. <laughs> that ending. Um, I, I love that. Very, very cool. And I've, like I said, I've reacted to one of the one of um, Montrose's songs from this album before. Um, I don't know which one it was. Maybe Rock Candy, if I'm not mistaken. But I really like the album. I really like the the sound of the band. It. I'm sure it was maybe um compared to Led Zeppelin at the time but I just looked Led Zeppelin had already released five of their best albums you know I mean the first five are like so legendary and I'm sure it got a little bit of a comparison just like Rush got you know um a lot of bands were compared with Led Zeppelin at the time but they do have their sound you know I I love that they're not um, that they're more guitar oriented. There's no keyboards here. Um, it's straight up rock and roll. You know, um, there's it's not any kind of psychic. Well, it was pretty psychedelic when they're you know messing around with the with the um, guitar at the beginning. You know, with the pickups and doing all these sounds with the pick and. Um, but other than that, it wasn't really like. Prague or anything it was straightforward rock. I love the drum track and the way it sped up at the end. It must have been fun to play. And I'm sure, like, this is just music that's a lot of fun for the drummer. It's very, um, even though there's no like really like syncopation or anything, but I'm sure as a drummer, this must have been a lot of fun. Just Led Zeppelin, you know, or Rush or whatever. But uh, yeah, very cool. I really enjoyed it. Very fun tune. But yeah. It echoes a little bit of Led Zeppelin, of course. I'm sure every band at the time was trying to, you know, it's it's it works. It's so popular. Let's try and, you know, maybe grab a little bit from this, you know. OK, um, uh, next song. So that's now what I'm going to do instead of reintroducing the song that I always do. Instead of like wasting five minutes in the beginning, I'm just going to reintroduce I always reintroduce the song anyway. So um, we're going to do Loosen Your Grip by Rick Derringer. Is it Rick Derringer? Um, yeah, Derringer. And this is from Derringer, the album, self-titled 76. And let's see if we can give the marathon like that a little bit of more, a uh, little bit more flow. Okay, here we go. With Rick. <laughs> Nice and tucked away. <laughs> nice.
Okay, I think I can take a little break here. I love the setup of the song. Just like, it's obviously a power ballad you hear. That's also what I wanted to talk about in the mantras. I love the acoustic guitar, um, the way it was introduced, the, brown, the, the strumming. But here it's it sounds a little bit more, I don't know, almost like Baroque-like, you know, the whole bum, 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 da 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 dum and the way he incorporated the solo in there was really nice in that you know soft section uh, soft section of the song that ballady and now they're really working it as a ballad you know it sounds really nice i love his singing really cool really good and um Let's see if it gets heavier. I don't want it to get heavier, but I mean, let's just see where they go with this. But it's really good. It's really, really just like, um, uh, yeah, it's nice to listen to, you know, something, you know, from a rock band. I'm going to turn this off. And uh, I, I just love power ballads, you know. I'm getting all these updates. Okay, here we go. Let's continue. Nice space. right there was already like sorry um <laughs> jimmy page but i've never heard jimmy page play a lick like that listen to this this Yeah, I mean, sorry, but the guitar playing here is just phenomenal. Like, super, the scales that he's using, you know, the classical melodic minor scale, but it's just, it's hard, you know, it's hard to play those instead of the pentatonic scale, you know, which is just, it's just different. Um, so, yeah, that was awesome. That was great. Uh, reminds me, of course, like Randy Rhodes, Ingwie Malmsteen, Michael, Sh uh, Michael Schenk, not maybe, yeah, Michael Schenker, I would say, Uli John Roth at the time, you know, would use these scales, um, Richie Blackmore, you know, and uh, they were just a little bit, you know, a little step above everybody else because of the technique. And um, uh, I don't think technique goes over. Because I've heard some stuff in the comment section. Oh, technique is just is just showing off. Like, no, I don't think so. They're just play better. That's the reality, you know. Um, so, yeah. Um, okay, let's continue. <laughs>
that was amazing very very good i just yeah i mean there's nothing much to to add what i already said you know the guitar playing is just like i said step above uh you can hear it the guy is obviously very you know the songwriting just gets so much better you know as the longer you practice and you know that's a lot of guitar players they get to a point and then they get famous and they play what they play and it's it works and it creates a lot of money and that's it you know that's pretty much the the level they stay at you know you can see it with metallica kirk hammett people you know um which is fine and then there's people that just push themselves forward and get better and better in every album you're like wow like what 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 was just what was that you know like michael romeo symphony x bands that are not as famous of course but their guitar players are just obsessed with like getting to that next level and there are levels um you know there's um of guitar playing and i don't know maybe people that don't play guitar don't know about this or people that are non-musicians that are just musicians by listening because you can't be a musician just by listening to music you're a, you appreciate music and you know pretty much everything in the book and you can even and you don't need to know theory or anything to be a great listener but if you know how to play you do notice the difference and you know the difficulty it takes to get to that next stage and to be able to play outside the chord and to play you know chromatic scales and in a particular velocity it's like it, some people just take that for granted completely and say oh it's not necessary you know but i think it is and if you know how to do it it's gonna enrich your your writing and everything and that's just the way it works okay so this next one here is pat travelers oh, wait travers i'm sorry pat Tra travers and this is a medley called Medley Parts 1 and 2 from the debut, Pat Travers, 1976. So the same year as Rick. Wow, Rick Derringer was just, wow, amazing. Okay, uh, but so far, uh, amazing marathon. Thank you so much. Really great rock and roll. Dare I say, you know, touching into the metal a little bit you know it's not metal especially the first and second one were more like straight up rock and roll but i mean it is in the genre you know yesterday i read a comment of uh a guy saying yeah acdc is like the true rock and roll the the hard rock hard rock band and yeah i would say this is hard rock not rock and roll rock and roll is like more the 50s stuff no, hard rock, and ACDC is like the hard rock band that never went metal, never went prog, st just straight up hard rock. I think this is great hard rock here, what we're listening to. But yeah, let's see, Let, let's see about the medley. Um, uh, here we go. I hope you're having fun. Let's go.
sometimes I listen to music and I'm just like, oh my god, like Iron Maiden straight up stole this, you know? It is, I mean, I would have done it, you know, if I would have had a band in the 80s starting and I would have heard this, I'm like, let's put a little bit of Pat in there, you know? Everybody who's listened to Iron Maiden knows, hey, this is like literally like, they would say this sounds like Pat Travers. It does, man. I mean, it's literally the same language. The bass is super loud. So good, man. I I I already know who I'm going to send this to. A very good friend of mine in Mexico who's also, we pretty much started to listen to Iron Maiden at the same time. If I send him this, he he's going to be like, this sounds like Iron Maiden. I'm sure he's going to say it. Um, and Iron Maiden has such a unique sound, so it's like almost like, you know, they came, you know, almost ten years before, and it's cool, you know, to, um, music always gets, you know, uh, bor borrowed. So yeah, let's listen to it again because the guitar came in here. Let's go back. <laughs>
moly. Well, this is literally one of my favorite instrumentals I've heard this year. Holy shish kebab. <laughs> Holy shish kebab. Honestly, like, this is so good. Like, the bass work in this song was ridiculous. Everything. The solo at the end with the crybaby. Man, um, so well executed. I think the bass player really, like... I don't know, was like the most important member. Those different, like the changes in rhythm, doo -doo 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 -doo, and then the way they would come back into the rhythm, and so good, man. Um, but yeah, it almost sounded like an, like it sounded like they had a lot of experience in other uh, musical, you know, styles. Like it sounded very funky, and it almost sounded like. Like fusion, you know, for a second there. Like it literally did. It didn't, it sounded more like these guys can play pretty much everything, you know. Um, this was one of the best um, instrumentals, honestly, I've heard in a long time. Like, and that's like literally the music that I love. It's like, and I, I'm sure Greybeard knows this because he knows, oh, Nick is such a Maiden fan. He loves Ingwie Malmsteen. He knows what I like, you know, in terms of scales and sound, what I expect. And what do I think is like, eh, you know, it's okay, you know. Um, a lot of music nowadays is it's crazy because it's being obviously... Music that used to be very, very complex is being dissected nowadays and every... Pretty much 12 year old can play it, you know, like because there's all these sheet music is out there. You have tablature. You can pretty much, you know, if you really practice, you can play pretty much everything. But there's stuff that you can't play right away. You know, uh, there you have to put in, you have to put in the work, you have to put in the hours. And, um, and that's just like music, you know. I wouldn't say this music, you know, this music is like intermediate, you know, you have to be really good to be able to play this from all sections. The bass player was ridiculous. You have to be playing, you know, three, four, five years to be able to play this, you know, effortlessly. And the drumming was just, oh God, so good. And, um, but yeah, that's just about like the thing that I think that some bands like just stop, you know. I think when the when the success comes and the money flows in, then they're like, hey, you know, why would I, you know, why would I, I don't have to do anything else. Like, I'm already a millionaire, you know. I don't know if that's the thought process, but I think a lot of guitar players have a different, they, they really need that. Um, there's a lot of guitar players that I read about, they really struggled because they were like, oh, I'm stuck, you know, like I'm, I'm, I'm not getting where I want to get. And I don't know where they want to get, but they want to get to that next level, you know, and um, some of them do, you know, you really hear it in, in their playing that, sh that they're completely, you hear them in one record and then the next record, you're like, wow, how the hell? Like, I think one great example of a guitar player who's always pushing the envelope and his playing is John Petrucci. He's always better. He's always better. Like if you hear him in like, like in the 90s and then you hear him in the 2000s and then now it's just like the guys like constantly. He's always like pushing that next level of guitar god, you know. So, okay. Enough about um, this. Uh, let's we'll give it up for Steve Miller. Wild Mountain Honey, and this is from their Greatest Hits album, um, and this is from 1978. I don't know if this was also, um, let's see. I'm just going to grab it from here, but I do want to give you the album, the correct album, if you want to look it up. Wild Mountain Honey. Steve Miller, okay. Fly like an eagle. Okay, that's the that's the album. Okay, I think I've heard f fly. I want to fly like an eagle. Yes, 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 yes. Oh man, this is gonna be good. I love that song. Um, okay, let's give it up for um for Wild Mountain Honey. Let's go. See the 
stars after a setting sun You run for the money You don't even know about wild mountain honey in this desert land come on children now learn how to run by heaven the stars the moon and the sun I love it. Come on, Papa, your end is the means. Don't trade your love and goodness for the golden machine. You run for the money. Very cool. Very good. Very different from what I expected. This was more like, you know, very soft and um, this was great. This was great. Um, I'm going to add another song, you know, and I know that Greybeard is a big fan of uh, Deep Purple. And I, um, since we just saw... This is, I guess, our only opportunity we got to see Deep Purple with one of the ex-members, you know. And it's this is, like, from their third, I think, um, 
I hope I'm I'm correct, but it is from their um David Coverdale and um Glenn Hughes days, you know. So two of course of the original elements were missing, but it's still the purple, you know. And so I'm going to play something from their Stormbringer album. I hope you like that one. Graybeard from 1974. And I'm going to play the title track, you know. Um last time I played Soldier Soldier of Fortune as a bonus and I got a lot of love. Yes, this one has 61 million. Stormbringer only only has 9 million, but it's still more than uh, you know, the usual. Um uh, like I just wanted to see something here real quick. Um from like Eric's notes but I can't seem to find them. Let's see. Um, okay. Aha. Yeah, and he even gave me the album. <laughs> Sorry, Greybeard. Fly Like an Eagle. This was the right song. Wild Mountain Honey. This was just a little bit different. Um, yeah. It was just a little bit different. It wasn't as guitar oriented as I expected it to be, but it was still great. Um, it reminded me almost like surfer music. You know, I used to have this um, this game and it was called Kelly Slater Pro Surfer. And it had like this bing, 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 the steel guitar um, and also instrumental and very like, you know, Hawaiian and the, that was a track. I wish I could pull it up. I'm sure if I look at for the soundtrack, I could actually play it here. But no, I'm doing this for just for the sake of the marathon, for it to be safe. You know, I know that uh, Greybeard um, was nice enough and he took a song by Warner, the Montrose. I was going to play some more Montrose, but hey, if we can play some Deep Purple on a guitar oriented marathon, why not? So we're going to do the title track, Stormbringer, and this is, like I said, 74. Glenn Hughes is on the bass and vocals, and um, we also have David uh, uh, Coverdale on the vocals, and who else? Who else? Let's see, look at the pers personnel. Richie Blackmore guitar, so it's going to be interesting. John Lord on organ, and Ian Pace on drums. So pretty much the originals plus these two. Very good musicians. It was just an, such a trip to see Clan Hughes play a bass and sing, and it was really good. And they played, you know, Highway Star, Child in Time. It was a good day. It was a good night. And then after that, Ingwe Malmsteen. I mean, I was in heaven. Okay, here we go. Stormbringer. Holy sh! Coming out of nowhere, dropping like rain, stone, bring a dance on the thunder again. Dark 
they really have that trademark man they sound so good i love deep purple and this sounds almost like what richie blackmore then did with in rainbow it reminds me of that middle eastern egyptian you know vibe they have you know like this you know it has that that i don't know and it almost sounds like when dio um was singing you know um ronnie james dio and um like i think the man i'm the man on the silver mountain you know that <laughs> Oh my god, that is so good. But it also, th it's so funny because when we saw um, him live, they played Mistreated. And I had never listened to the song, um, but I didn't even know it was Deep Purple. And um, and th because that song is also on the Inspirations album by Ingwie Malmsteen, which was so cool because we saw Ingwie Malmsteen and I heard Mistreated by the original you know band that played it um so and it sounds like it has also that mistreated bum, bum, bam, 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 like this vibe here is it on this album no but uh, i love this album this is really good i mean i love all the deep purple you know i love all the singers i love th their catalog is like perfect um, and I'm going to do some Deep Purple today with Tommy Bolin as well. So, And he wouldn't shut up about Tommy Bolin. He really honestly loved the guy. You know, he was like, Tommy Bolin, I can see, I can feel him. I can feel his presence right now. I think, uh, and he also was like, because Glenn used to live in Denver. And, uh, and he's like, I can feel him. Like, I'm back and I can feel Tommy's presence here. So this was very, very special, especially since you guys introduced me to Tommy Bolin. I was like tripping, you know, I was like, oh, my God, Alexa was tripping. And then we were like getting, uh, you know, picks thrown at us by Ingwe Malmsteen. You know, I caught four. I, that was like a dream come true, you know, to to catch a pick, you know, and he was kicking them, you know. <laughs> OK, let's finish this song and... um. But yeah, what a great band. I hope you're enjoying this because this is a bonus. Sabroso, sabroso, honestly. Very tasty, very good, very just amazing. What a great band. Um, well, that's it, folks. Thank you so much. Thank you, Greybeard. I hope you enjoyed your marathon. I hope everybody else enjoyed your marathon. I for sure enjoyed this very, very much. I think, I mean, all of these songs were amazing, amazing, just like amazing balls. I <laughs> <laughs> um this was montrose was just fantastic rick was out of this world um i think pet uh travers was the one that i love the most steve miller band i know they're amazing you know this was just a softer version very very beautifully played and i think deep purple you know gave it like you know that punch that it needed to end and you know to have two Warner Brothers. That's the beauty that Warner Brothers, um, Deep Purple is Warner Brothers. So we always have uh, a reason to play Deep Purple at the end. So I think this was great. Thank you so much again, everybody, for watching, for sticking to the end. I know these are long. I'm trying to make them shorter by making the intro a little bit shorter. I hope this works. And um, well, thank you so much again. I'll see you guys in the next one.